Hi everyone, hope you're well. Amazing. I'm just setting myself up quickly. Uh, Please take hi. your time. Welcome everyone. Hello. So yes, welcome to our uh, STEM and robotics community call. This is a topic that has been uh, interest of so many members because we have already many members that are working uh, on this field and have these tactics education in different contexts. So let me start by just introducing uh, STEM and just quickly for those maybe who don't know it, uh, though I highly doubt it. Um, STEM is an approach to learning and development that integrates areas of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And it's usually um, has a focus on problem solving, creativity, critical analysis. And um, from what we've seen with a lot of our members is that this has been an area that was integrated in their maker spaces and labs and fab labs and all the spaces that they've on. So today we've decided to bring with us some of our pioneers from the network in the area of STEM education and robotics uh, so that they can tell us more about you know, their work. We get to understand from them their challenges and also their aspirations to that field. So I'll introduce very quickly our members. Um, uh, and Nauras just joined, so amazing. Nauras um, Adif is the founder of Science Camp in Basra, Iraq a very long contributor to the field of education um, in um, this area. I think I hear myself. I'll just mute. Can, maybe Wambua could mute themselves or Fadio. I don't know if you have host rights and can mute. I just did it. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> I didn't notice. Uh, so yeah, now is just uh, is joining in, tuning in from Basra. Now has long years of experience working with students. Uh, from the ages of 13 all the way up to uh, college students. I think he'll tell us more about this, but I know that just recently he's been traveling around uh, for different to attend different challenges, robotic challenges, and, and achieving so many great things with his group of students. And then we have uh, Rosanna Lopez uh, tuning in or uh, connecting in from Manila. Um, uh, Philippines. She's the founder of Sparker Labs, and I know that just recently you've had a transition that maybe you could tell us about and tell us more about your current role. And uh, last but not least is Shaukat Ali, again connecting from Tanzania, I'm guessing Tanga, Iron Hours. And uh, Shaukat Ali has been one of our most recent great additions to our network. Uh, he's, you know, I look around into your LinkedIn and I see all these great pictures of you with students and different people rounding up on a computer. So Shaukat Ali has moved from um, uh, Dar es Salaam to Tanga. Uh, to pursue a passion for open innovation. So he's the founder of Tanzania Open Innovation Organization, among other things. Another thing is the RoboTech Labs, and maybe you could explain to us the relationship between both spaces um, during that call. So this is it for my introduction. I would just like to say that I will hand over uh, first for our speakers today to introduce their work and their interest in STEM education. And then I would love if our Geraldine, uh, our founder, Geraldine, who had suggested this call in the first place can take over for some moderate, moderation of the discussion. So who would like to go first uh, from our speakers? Rosanna, please go ahead. I see you're trying to unmute. <laughs> Sure. Hi. So I'm Rosanna. I'm currently based in Manila, Philippines. I've been here over the last 12 years. And um, so my my background is actually in um, diplomacy and international relations. Um, but throughout my life, I've always been passionate about working with young people. Um, and I did this in a variety of different contexts, usually um, in development. So I worked, um, you know, with kids throughout the Philippines, um, Argentina, uh, Palestine, the inner cities of New York. And in 2012, I returned to the Philippines to start Sparta Lab, which is an R&D space dedicated to imagining um, the future of learning. So how can learning be um, engaging? How can it be fun and playful? How can it be more meaningful to kids and families? Um, 
and where kids actually design their learning experience, right? And take it um, based on their passions and their interests and their dreams. Um, big fan of STEAM education. You know, we started our lab um, offering programs um, in game design and experience architecture where kids learned everything from scratch to Python to making escape room games and board games. Um, we have a program that's called Stitches and Circuits, which is more on fashion technology, e-textiles, lily pad, Arduino. And we did this initially so that girls would be um, into STEM. And then when the boys saw what the girls were creating, they were like, okay, we all want in as well. And so everyone joined in. Um, we had programs on storytelling, right? Um, whether it's through a PSA, a music video, an animation, or a film. And of course, robotics programs and programs that focused on IoT um, and, and programs on toy making. But I think a, a recurring theme um, throughout my work is that um, kids really care about the world around them and they care about not just their friends, but other kids. And so there's always been this bent on designing for social good, right? Um, so for example, um, with our toy making, you know, um, we had kids design toys with assistive technology, right? And kind of um, imagined what toys would be appealing um, to kids, for example, who were going through mental health issues or who had learning disabilities. Um, and um, I guess another area of focus was communities of practice and having kids team up with kids from other parts of the world as they tried to solve problems ranging from traffic, to pollution, um, sustainability, but also like democracy and fake news. Um, and eventually, uh, Sparkle Lab became a school called the Discovery Academy of Innovation. Um, and we currently cater to pre-K through second grade. Um, and it's, it's actually a wonderful brick and mortar space where kids can come and create together. Um, that said, uh, over the past year or so, I've also realized that there's a lot of CapEx involved, right? And having a school from fit out to rent to the build to actually the materials and the tech involved. And so it became this kind of thing where similar to Montessori, Waldorf, um, or even Reggio Emilia, progressive education, which was meant to be for all, started becoming for the elite and a select few because the business model around it did not allow us to to offer our programs at a lower cost. And so um, with regard to the transition that Fadia spoke about, I'm currently um, working on a new venture, which uh, seeks to scale fun, progressive, play-based STEAM education um, at minimal to no cost uh, to kids around the world using um, AI, AR, and gamification. Wow, beautiful. What a start. Uh, thank you so much for sharing this with us. I really look forward to uh, start this discussion and just also worth noting that we have with us here so many other members that are also doing great um, uh, work around the area of STEM and robotics. So we'd hope to get your contribution as well. And um, with this, I move on to Shaukat Ali. Maybe if you're ready, you can tell us a little bit about your perspective on STEM and what you're doing in the moment. Yeah, I think I think there was uh, from my side. Um, so I mentioned something that I'm very passionate about. I think accessibility and affordability for people who have bit of no access is very important, and that's why I think um, when I started Robotech Labs in 2017, the idea was to provide access to people with little to no exposure to these STEM related activities, especially robotics. And um, over the past few years, uh, it's been quite an interesting journey because building robots is one element, but building robots that can whether have impact or actually are telling a story is very essential. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware about, but in, in India, there's something called um, the Tech that was by, which was hosted by IIT Mumbai. And that was inspired on how for for all these purposes. So not only are they building for learning, but also building to actually solve problems as well. So that's kind of inspired me to have my own like tech fest here in 2017, 2018, 2019. And 
when people actually believe in this very simple like blind man stick devices for people who are visually impaired, but also would actually involve the blind people as well. So actually not so actually the connection between the actually people by actual people actually visually impaired and people actually by and sort of blindfolded as well. Quite interesting um mix and match to see how they could actually co-create solutions to help these kind of people. And this is how we kind of created this platform where um Toyo, which is an which is an NGO but it's established in 2021, would focus or reach out more or most of the public schools who have almost no no access to STEM-based learning and uh, resources per se. And um, that's I think one thing I really I really believe is essential because if you're trying to build a future uh, a generation of future engineers or innovators, the grassroots need access to it as possible. And again, access to these kits can be quite expensive. I mean, as Rosanna said, the capex is quite intense. We try using resources that are locally available as much as possible to create these robots. Again, it can be into the boxes with styrofoams. And obviously, by introducing these, for example, with 3D printers to them and, and seeing their excitement, they actually, they actually make something like a Lego block, literally from plastic. It's quite exciting. So, what we do basically is we try um, co creating solutions that we think we can in our space, but also use existing resources as much as possible. And for one of our recent examples is we made these snap based circuits uh, using, you know, like wooden wooden blocks and then small wiring internal, like small wires of copper inside. inside. They're making a small like a puzzle piece around that. And it was quite, quite interesting for students, especially in the primary and like in the early secondary schools, especially play with these things. So then now we're currently in the right ideas of making these DIY STEM kits, but initially by the community students themselves. And there we actually reach out to the local city council and say, you know, we want to get some local funds from the, from the municipal council to make these kits so they reach out to more schools as possible. But at the same time, we also want to ensure that we treat these ro robotics competitions as much as possible and then have them compete on a bigger platform. Um, I don't know, I, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty much sure you've heard of um, something called the first global robotics competition that has happened by the United States. Um, We've taken like three teams uh, over the past three years to compete, and then the exposure that they get and the experience they bring back is, is is insane. When they come, the hubs and the groups, and then meet these robots, and then have them compete on a smaller scale, and then go abroad again and compete internationally. It's quite interesting. So, I think the focus is big, but I'm 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 more open to hearing what everyone else has to say as well. So, yeah. Amazing. It's also interesting to see how STEM is different or, or how the application of, of STEM education is different from one place to another, depending on the resources, but also the needs. Uh, I completely relate to a lot of what you were saying, uh, Shaukat, on, on you know, the resources and existing structures of education coming from Egypt myself. Um, thank you so much for sharing. And Nauras, are, are you ready to um, maybe tell us a little bit about your journey with STEM? And I know that it goes way back. You've been in this field for more than 10 years, I guess. And uh, we'd be very, very happy to get your insights on where you started, perhaps, and where you are at the moment, and whether anything changed uh, from the perspective as you started. Yes. If I want to start about very, very little introduction about the project myself and start to talk about the robotics and education. Um, as you know, I graduate as a pharmacist, uh, but uh, I will, I'm impassioned with designing, making stuff and inventing solutions, especially in mechanics and this type of um, science part. But in my deep childhood, I was artist. I do I do this type of sculptures and drawing and this type of stuff. So I have thousands of sketches, but I never accept the solid state of uh, sculpture. So I want them to move, so make them as robots. So yes, it is very early. Uh, started Science Camp 2013, or about in this uh, uh, era, to share the workshop and the knowledge and to know more people locally, especially after I uh, find a definition of who I am and what I am doing, which is a maker. So in maker movement, yes, there is a big family and I am very happy with my gig family nowadays. There are a lot of makers. Uh, 
yes, let's say this is type of introduction about who I am and what we are uh, would like to talk and why we have the right to talk in this topic, the education, STEM education and robotics. Uh, as you notice from my story, I'm not that much happy with the educational process because they don't ask uh, uh, people here in Iraq who, who you are or what you can do, or what type of field you want to study or you are good in. So uh, science camp is a point in my life where I change this and uh, reorient my life towards the real rule or what can I do or support my community or even globally, how to fix that. So education is important. I start with the point of making robots, designing robots. So I do self-learning and 3D modeling, industrial design, electronics, Erdogan and stuff uh, to make this type of robots in the end. And I have uh, very early models for prosthetics and robotic arms from very, very long time. Uh, education is something in the deep of the educational problem for us here in Iraq, especially locally. If I want to talk locally, we suffer from a very poor uh, theoretical education and uh, we lack the gamification in learning. We lack this type of practical or the hands-on activities. Because in the end, I believe that science is something uh, uh, happens or created by practice, by uh, experimenting, by discovering. So it is very practical. Uh, the theoretical version of science, it is a type of documentation of real practice of science. So we should introduce to the generation the practical part. We want them to practice science rather than hearing about or reading about the science. This is uh, affect highly the job market, the industry, the whole country development. In many countries, not take care about education. Later on, several years, you will find this type of issues rises in community, in society, and in the uh, in the economy, especially in district. So I try to fix, the, to fix that locally. So I start to make this type of communication. So from the very early stages of Robotic Olympics in First Global, I be the exclusive partner for Iraq to cure and develop Team Iraq. So this is uh, the 10th year we lead Team Iraq in First Global Challenge and it will be happen in uh, Athens, Greece this year. So I hope also to meet other giggers. And I was very interesting to hear uh, Shaukat Ali mention First Global also. So we are attached in multiple worlds, multiple communities. So yes, let's make it again. <laughs> let's meet there as giggers this time. Um, nowadays, I develop a production line for several reasons to fix the education because I noticed that the local generation is not uh, get the educational uh, equity or uh, opportunity as we get in our generation. Yes, I was grow in very uh, dictatorial and uh, uh, not that happy uh, regime during Saddam's era, but there was nothing to do rather than schools. It was the only interesting activity we did. Nowadays, we see something uh, different. Uh, I see young people uh, can't read and write. And it was not happened in, in before. I never seen this in my childhood. So I feel somehow uh, it is not well, it is wrong, and we need to do something. Yes, I cannot do everything, the whole country, but yes, let's start something to be like a milestone for next step. So uh, try And I think we might have lost notice for connection and technical reasons. Hopefully he will be back with us right away. In the meantime, um, 
I just want to uh, acknowledge that we have today so many relevant members and members um, present today um, and would probably have also so much that can contribute to the theme. So I'd like to welcome Vuga from North Uganda, Dodgy from Cote d'Ivoire, Saad in Singapore, Martin Ulu and Charles from Fabla Buinam in Kenya. Uh, who else? And of course, Impact Health Kathmandu in Nepal. There are so many people and it's so great. And of course, also uh, Tushuoko from uh, Nigeria, Abe. Uh, thank you so much for joining today. And I feel in the meantime, we could get this discussion started because we would also hope to hear from you guys what you have to contribute and what you have to say. So I would love to hand over to Geraldine at this moment. Great list of notes. So the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Fadia. I do still need to switch internet, so I might be gone for 30 seconds in a moment, but I hope to return as swiftly as possible. Um, I uh, love your presentations. Thank you all so much for sharing. And maybe just two or three sentences for me. I um, I was chatting with Naris and learning about his participation in the robotics competition and some of the other activities. And knowing that a lot of you are working on the similar topics, we thought it would be good to have today's meeting and the sharing session. So it was also especially great for me to just find out, Shakatali, that you're already involved there. And um, I definitely love uh, to, in a moment, first of all, ask if any of our other members want to share also relevant activities that you have, anything that links on, or if you have any questions to everybody who just presented. And then I thought we can start discussing some of the common themes and maybe end our discussion today by thinking about whether we want to have a junior gig gathering at uh, the next global robotics competition. I believe it's later this year in Greece. So I would definitely love to join you guys there and would love to hear your thoughts on this. But first of all, I'd like to open the floor for any other gig members. I know, of course, start that you have relevant activities, but perhaps also um, from Impact Hub or Fab Lab Winner or CNC. So would anybody else like to share anything relevant you're working on or does anybody have any questions? Maybe, thank you so much. Maybe just to comment about the, the kids activity. Uh, Fab Lab Winner has been very keen about kids activity and uh, we've been members of what we call Global, um, Global Kids Day which brings together different fab labs uh, and we connect uh, the children majorly focus on education, uh, culture and digital fabrication. So our lessons are, are, are around how they can build culture related uh, items um, using digital fabrication tools. And uh, basically um, fab lab has also been doing other STEM related activities, for example, if you can see this T-shirt, it's written ESTEM. So we have a program going to schools where we also allow students to um, co um, do some practicals uh, on environmental science, technology, engineering, mathematics. And this is just trying to expose a lot of uh, uh, our students into science-related um, activities because our schools are more focused on theory, which I like the way you know Norwich is talking about it as um, documentation of, 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 of practicals, you know, but otherwise the rest of other people have been looking at it as theory is the main thing, but there should be practical part of, of science and then theory is just documentation of it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Martin. Um, any other shares, shares from the other community members? Anybody else on this call? We know you're only very quietly. If you can get closer to a microphone. Ah, now. Can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Is it better? 
Okay, okay. So um, I'm Tochuku from um, the Internet Innovation Center, a makerspace in Aba. Um, I'm sorry I didn't join so early because I, I was traveling. I was traveling from Aba to Omaha. So I just arrived at my destination. So for um, I'm a very passionate advocate for um, for um, for the kind of education. The matter of our focus is on STEM education and engineering education. I'm afraid you're breaking up. We can hear you really well. We are now, looking at the kind of education that um, Africa, um, with a focus on for local production. Okay. Should I? Can you hear me now? Is it better? Okay. Yes, please. Okay. So, okay. So, so our focus is to um, improve local production and manufacturing in Africa, because we believe that that is a key to solving the problems of unemployment, poverty, um, and other issues in Africa. So for our um, STEM education, what we do, because we realize initially we are building STEM kids, So here in Nigeria, probably in, other, in some other countries too in Africa, it's about passing your exams. It's about getting you know, the best grades in school. So we notice that the schools we are trying to work with, the secondary school owners and the school management and the parents, that they don't have a lot of interest um, in skill, in particular skill, in particular knowledge. Their priority is academic performance. So what we now adapted to do is we are not redesigning our STEM kids to incorporate academic topics into the kids, such that our kids will serve multiple functions. One, it will be helping the students to learn those topics that they will need to write and pass exams. And then it will also be developing critical skills like problem solving skills, critical thinking skills, um, design skills, design thinking skills, and other fundamental skills that they need to excel in engineering and in, um, in STEM career. So that's the new direction we took. We learned from it. And then so what we do now, we we'll look for a topic in physics or chemistry or whatever biology, we we'll get that topic from the curriculum, and then we we'll now design kits that will demonstrate the practical application of that topic or that theory so that the students are doing practicals which demonstrates or validates that topic or that theory in classroom. So it gives them a deep, a deep understanding of that topic because now they can see where that topic is applied in real life in the industry, in equipment, in products, we we'll do that connection between those topics and where it's applied in the real world. And then through those kids, we also help them to validate those, those theories. So by incorporating the academic curriculum into our STEM kids, we are able to win the attention of the schools and the parents. So that's what we are doing uh, within the STEM Thank you for the ability to also share. Thank you. That's so cool. Thanks so much for sharing. I just it was just associative thinking to what you were talking about because um I think that's such an interesting point that you made about local production and manufacturing and STEM. And um I 
I think the Dex kit is also still such a great example of that. So I don't want to create a, 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 this neighboring country rivalry <laughs> at all. Um, but these guys, when I met them, they were also producing locally in Kumasi the science kits and then shipping them around the country and the world. So I think it's really great because I think this is such a good approach in the sort of localization of production, both in terms of building the skills for future generations, um, as well as the localization of the educational tools themselves. So really cool example that you shared. Thank you. Um, uh, great. Uh, still, Are there still more examples to be shared? I know, of course, Saad, you are uh, engaged, especially we touched upon working with children uh, and disabilities earlier, and this idea that Rosanna also introduced of children being the designers of their own uh, educational worlds and tools. Um, but I don't know if you're in a position where you want to share or speak right now. You are. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, it, it's always inspiring to hear <laughs> And And uh, the uh, work I'm doing here in Singapore is um, a, a direct result of uh, the brilliant gig network effect um so always hearing from other members is um um uh, inspiring um uh, just to speak to um the assistive devices um i think the the um, uh as uh, now is also was talking about uh we've got the 3d printing and digital fabrication it's getting a lot more uh, accessible. It's not as expensive as it used to be. People are less scared of uh, trying things out, and I think that's an, that presents a good uh, advantage for bringing people into the design process. So, Geraldine, like what you were saying is that you know you could bring people in now to co-create rather than um, have sort of like a transactional approach where somebody comes to somebody and says, "Look, you're an expert in three D printing. Can you make me this?" Instead, try and change the conversation and say, look, let's sit together and see what you're struggling with. And maybe we can actually come up with something together. Um, and it seems like a simple little idea, but it takes a lot of doing. And having um, uh, people be familiar with and not scared of uh, distributed manufacturing and digital fabrication, it goes a long way. People feel less scared. People are more uh, approachable. They open up and say, look, um, I saw this thing on YouTube or on TikTok and it looks great, um, but how do I get one? Uh, instead of doing that, we try and change the conversation by saying, okay, let's see if we can maybe make one. And along the way, we realize that's not really what you needed. Uh, what you needed was something maybe simpler or something maybe uh, that didn't require 3D printing. Um, so I think the conversations and the approach uh, goes a long way in uh, making this technology more inclusive. Um, so I don't really have a question, but uh, those are just my reflections. Thank you so much, Saad, and um, also a helpful segue kind of into the set of questions I want to ask, as in, we obviously have so many amazing people in our community working on exactly these topics, so I definitely also want to ask um, what would support you in your work best? Uh, like I said, maybe we can talk about having a junior gig gathering at some of these events. Uh, we now have these community groups on WhatsApp but how can we help connect the dots between your work? If that's valuable for you, what other forms of exchange might you appreciate? But first off, Ruga, please. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon from my side and uh, to the all the Geeks uh, members. And uh, mine is, uh, I'll just put uh, two things that as a team, we need to look into how uh, other hubs can also start now implementing our idea because uh, I look at uh, gigs as a, a pool of resources whereby it uh, gathers so many people have a uh, different ideas and doing things to solve uh, community problems. Um, talking days of uh, a contact of refugees and uh, if I can remember well on uh, 2019, my first uh, attend for uh, gig talks in Nakuru we, we define what the best thing we can do to, 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 to the communities. 
and look into the educations whereby in refugees context by it, it limits the young people to, to have access, although they have ideas like sewing their potentials, um, how they can do things hand to tools. Uh, most of them lose hope looking into the best thing you can do is unless you go to school and look into the what people teach uh, school also give in, a, in the, these young people. It's more, uh, they don't have access to these practical things. Uh, I'm looking into, we, 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 this is what gets uh, given platform for us to showcase, sell idea, how we can do so that somebody can uh, adopt. But uh, also looking back into the technology, how do we bring the women on the board to also adopt these skills so that they can, they can use? To, to me is uh, the best strategy that we can use uh, as a geek, as a family, they can use uh, through these hubs to bring young women on a technologies hand to tool so that they won't forget uh, that the tools that they use at home so that uh, that will also help in the documentations that will uh, reach to the community so that they can understand their purpose in the community. I think uh, uh, the topic is very important for us and we need to look more into the data and research. How do we do that? How do we bring women on the board? Because if we look back and the 3Ds and people also, most of the thing that 3D do is uh, something that has been happened some years back. And how do we make this to be a new thing and a unique thing that one can also feel part of it? And this is something that's not forgettable in terms of culture, because I remember when we were young, we used to do modeling using soil planes. And where this things go, those are all idea. How do you bring these young people doing that stuff at the space to look into so that they can uh, exercise rather than be in the class, tall, finish the degree level, coming to the practical things. They are not doing well. So I think uh, to me, I'll say uh, Geek is a, is a home, is a platform, is a resources. And we need to reach more people that they can understand what is our mission, what is our purpose as a gift. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's from my side. Thank you so much, Bugo. You raised such important points. And also thank you, of course, um, for your uh, feedback to the community that we are. And maybe if anybody also here has ideas they share of how they specifically address women and girls, how you make your space is safe and attractive for them um that's definitely something that would be great to share ideas about this is still such a huge issue everywhere also here in germany so thanks again for bringing up this important point i would now pass to impact hub Kathmandu, who also wanted to share some of their work and then we can uh, group in discussion for the remaining time please over to you uh, can you hear me Okay, so a first stem, uh, Fab Lab Nepal on the in impact of Kathmandu. We started with a couple of workshops uh, where we engaged different youth of youth of uh, from grade uh, six to around eight, nine. So from that, uh, we engaged uh, them uh, based on project-based learning around electronics, around digital fabrication, around uh, like different, doing different projects such as greeting cards, smaller projects from start. And then we shifted to uh, how to make our space more accessible, safe, and also welcoming to uh, female girls and also to the youth. So uh, the first one was uh, with kind donation from USMC and second was uh, a project called Making Spaces uh, with the University College of London. And where we, we ourselves became aware about how to design curriculum, uh, how to have that sense of belonging to the curriculum and how we can practice that informal learning session with the students so that they can open up easily and also be confident about uh, sharing what they feel and the challenges that they have during the journey. So uh, not uh, like constraining with the actual curriculum, but opening up with what the challenges, daily challenges is 
and designing the curriculum so that we can incorporate with the things that they do in their daily life was what we practiced. And as a result, at the end of the program, uh, it is in the end uh, kind of phase, but the feedback that we got from the students was mainly most of the students had more confident while sharing things and uh, also had a, 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 how do you call, say how do i say the how they can communicate well uh, to other people counterparts male or female or anyone and also to to boldly say what they cannot do or what they want to do so that's uh, what we had uh, by the end of that journey and now what we're trying to do is for the educational sector in that level, uh, we are trying to do one program where we want to actually understand what is the gap between the actual thing that uh, the Curriculum Development Center, Nepal government is planning and also where's the gap actually uh, to actually practice that because when we practiced or uh, from the from our experience, what we found out was there might not be any, uh, the curriculum might not be according to, uh, according to how young people would, you know, uh, want, but going back there and checking out the curriculum, it was very good. The output, the impact that was, uh, that should be there was there in papers but the implementation part from the classroom was not there. So bridging that gap is what we are looking right now. So from the experience from the project-based learning uh, and also making our space more welcoming, safe, and also uh, you know a sharing space, now going to that area where we can engage and use our experience to actually uh, like practice in it in the classroom is what we are trying to do right now. And uh, in this phase, we are try targeting on grade six, uh, where uh, we're trying to develop different kits that is, uh, that is also uh, connected to the culture of Nepal so that people can, the students can uh, like actually feel, see and uh, experience that learning uh, from the community, from the elders, and also uh, try to get different ideas around how they can improve it or uh, have an open kind of uh, way of thinking towards the tradition and also learning different outcomes of that curriculum uh, is what we are trying to do. And it's uh, obviously a, a, a support from Open University right now. But that is the current phase right we are now, uh, scoping study. And during that, we also found out that there are different kind of you know, communities. Uh, one community that we are trying to do is community in government schools where the students, uh, the background, economic background is not that good. So uh, what problem that we have heard is uh, there's not much support when they go back to their houses like home. And um, another thing is the students who is from the village and they come to Kathmandu, they work or like they, they help uh, on the households and then come to schools. So they do not have that time to actually, you know, uh, practice the session. And uh, another thing is going into science is kind of uh, expensive, I'd say because the investment on engineering or other technical field when they move ahead it is expensive so parents or the guardian uh, cut off that wing of the students when they reach uh, on eighth or ninth grade so that is the basic challenge that we are scoping right now now we'll try to like have some innovative or creative ideas around how we can solve that so that is the issue that we are trying to face and uh, solve and yeah, that's what we want to share. And uh, I think, like from uh, uh, from the, uh, from from the previous uh, speaker, 
I think we'll be also seeing different kits that is already there. And if we can localize or use some knowledge from that and implement in our kits, that would be lovely. And yeah, that's it, uh, what we want to share. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. This, um, this has been really, really exciting to learn about. Uh, I want to give space in case anybody wants to react. I'm already seeing some comments in the chat coming in on this, uh, also from uh, the people who presented at the beginning, but maybe beyond, you also want to um, comment in 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 a vocal way, not just in the chat. Yeah, sure. Okay. Hi, I'm Bjorn from Namibia, Robot School. So from our side, like this whole STEM education kind of principle has been kind of very interesting because like we come from maker spaces and now I've been put into like hardcore education kind of things. And our education system is also not the greatest, but what we found through discussion and through looking at our children, I don't know if other same STEM centers have the same, but we kind of found that project-based learning and blended learning kind of two principles work best for these children. Like we start from like four years old, which is super tiny. Um, and that is basically hand-eye coordination and all kind of soft skills. And what we've realized throughout in the last like five years is that eventually when this child turns like 14, it's not really science, maths, art related in terms of STEM, but it kind of creates this way of thinking. And that is almost like a fab lab kind of way of thinking where these children learn just basically how to make stuff right and how to solve problems and i think that is something which especially in in the Mobius community it scares a lot of parents where it's like oh well you guys are creating like these strange individuals it's like what are they going to become are they going to become engineers are they going to become i don't know artists or whatever or scientists and our argument was always like no they are going to have a maker mentality to become anything Right. So that is, I think, from my point of view, the important thing in terms of why are we actually doing STEM? It's not really teaching people to become scientists, it's teaching people to think. Thanks. Thank you. Um, and I think, yeah, I think it's really, I think the, the bandwidth is really fantastic. Like the uh, some of the depth of, of um, skill building that you shared in different technical aspects, but keeping in mind this holistic picture of what kind of citizens do we want to be? What kind of humans do we want to be? How do you want to go through life thinking proactively about things? Um, um, so I, I'm looking at the chat in parallel and seeing how we can maybe use the last couple of minutes to also think about how do we want to continue collaborating on this topic? I was just, my mind was just wandering because we have this Design Thinking Institute in Germany here, which is quite famous and also has funds. <laughs> and I know they're planning some, some global activities. Um, and it just in the context that you just spoke, uh, Bjorn, maybe they could be an interesting partner for also hosting some uh, events of our own. So um, yeah, does anybody, I'm, I'm, we're gonna save the chat and save your ideas and and maybe find other opportunities to dig a bit deeper on these. So. Um, Maybe we can have a just a really quick sort of flashlight on ideas. How would you, outside of this beautiful community call that we've had, like us to help connect the dots within the gig community? What kind of uh, collaboration ideas might you have that we could engage in? Uh, who's coming to Greece this year? What other events? So just so you talk about, gosh, might be relevant. So any ideas on that? Fadia, do you want to go first? I'm not sure if I should go first, but uh, I'm just like super excited to share some of the ideas that uh, we've had for the community for a while now. And now there is like a bulb lightning when we talk about STEM education and see how much interest and how many active members that are working on this. And one idea would be to think of these, the regional gatherings that we've been talking about for a while and see if there is a possibility that we make one of those regional ga gatherings at 
one of your spaces or one of your cities and make the focus or the main focus around STEM education that could also be interesting in ways uh, so that we could fundraise for such events and help get partners to sponsor because it would be more focused than saying we're going to have a global innovation gathering. But this, this is one idea because I, I see so much comments about coming together to do stuff like this and um, uh, challenges and other stuff. So I just got excited and I wanted to see how you feel about the feasibility of something like this in the first place. So adding that to possible ideas to the list, but um, obviously feel free to keep it open. And uh, yeah, so what would make sense for you? How can we help connect dots and, um, and support your guys' work? There seems to be a lot of uh, already like um, things happening in Southeast Asia. <laughs> so I'm I'm looking at the gosh. Um, and, and maybe we can also have another sign of light at hands, like who's definitely bringing their uh, kid teams to this uh, global event this year. Uh, also, maybe a sound off who's going to Fab 24. That's also a relevant event. So yeah, don't be shy with your requests here. <laughs> Please go ahead. So um, I think this is the skip of the comments, and I think um, uh, the ideas have been shared as well. I think the the kits is something I think both of us are talking about. Like making some like DIY kind of kits as well, so we can kind of like look into that area. Number one, um, and number two, I think having a so like a, like a, something I commented about having a platform or a competition where we can have some of these kits being used as part of the competition or some sort of STEM activity. But it can be it can be in different areas at the same time. I think if we can have like multiple um, like tech fests or whatever these are, kind of you want to call them, or programs with our own like um, we have set up maybe a, kid, um, a fundraiser campaign or a Kickstarter program or whatever, whatever, whatever platform you want to use. We can maybe cook it a kit that can be like a competitive competition kit that's actually affordable by people, but also have them being like used, and then have like a an annual gathering and have them all compete on a bigger platform as well. Um, I think that'd be quite interesting. But again, focus being on the people that don't have access to these in such a way they can even you know add on to these things as well. So that's what I have, that's what I have in my mind. Thank you. I'm just taking notes as well. Um, I think maybe also <laughs> more with the chat. Um, uh, I think there's so many different angles. So I'm also my mind is also spinning, and maybe we can also have like maybe some of you guys want to take this question away and also come back to us with some ideas. I think it'd be also so great to um, take another look at the kits in this network and the tools that exist and how we can perhaps think about. Um, especially the ones that are open source uh, resources, uh, share them within the network pro more proactively even and see about perhaps also local production and reproduction where it makes sense. Um, so maybe that's another interesting angle. And, um, and I think it would also be a good idea to sort of collect some of these event ideas that are coming in the chat and then uh, have another round of seeing who the gig members can see. I think setting up from our side, support and funding structures, seeing also how we can support people partaking in events. So the access issue uh, also, again, from approach from different levels might be uh, something that we can look into um, to see how we can support. And I do think it would be so great. You know, I don't know what other main sort of events there are apart from e-learning Africa where education um, folks gather, where we could perhaps also have a stronger presence to share the work that you're doing and, and kind of hack, uh, hack our way into their systems 
um, actively as well. So maybe those are some of the ideas that we'll definitely take away and I'd say that our door is open. And if you have any further ideas on how we would like us to support the work you're doing locally, how we could support you joining um, global affairs with your local work or connecting dots between our members, then please feel free to approach us with those. And um, yeah, I'd, uh, <laughs> uh, I thought it'd be nice to think about if we could do a little bit of a, a shout out maybe via the WhatsApp to see also who's coming to which events and to see how we can support a junior gig uh, gathering um, alongside us. So those regional ones we might be planning next year, that would be super cool. That's my little summary. Um, I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who came and presented. I learned so much and this has been such an exciting call. If anybody else wants to say some closing words, please go ahead. But um, yeah, just a huge thank you from my side. And if not, looking forward so much to seeing some of you in Berlin soon and we'll be missing uh, others dearly. Um, but yeah, I hope to see you in, to see all of you in one different space. Um, also very soon and hope you all have a great day. Thank you for organizing Fadia and thanks for everybody who shared and came. Well, thank you everyone and bye-bye for until next community call. And see you soon, Norris. Mm -hmm. See you Bye. soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.